non-americans have read it what is the craziest rumor you heard about america that turned out to be true injured people try to avoid getting ambulances called for them for real wtf i heard that americans had to pay for an ambulance ride and thought at most it would just be an amount to cover petrol but i've seen people claim it costs anywhere up to three thousand dollars i understand it will probably vary a lot between states every day i'm increasingly thankful for the nhs and so sad to see it underfunded and struggling to cope my boyfriend has health insurance got a bill for 990 dollars for a 15 minute ambulance ride that hawaiians really like spam yeah and there's a perfectly good reason for it too after pearl harbor the effects of ww2 started in the us and rationing became a thing well it turns out that it's kind of hard to get fresh rations to an island that imports a lot so for meat they had to make do with spam human ingenuity prevails and dishes were made and that's how hawaii learned to love spam they have garbage disposals in their kitchens that's just so wild to me okay this is one i an american didn't expect to see didn't realize these weren't common in other countries why do they seem wild easier for the home er wanna to rinse scrap food off plates and peel veggies into the sink and waste water treatment is better designed to process biomass than landfills seems like a win-win uk we put stuff like that in a small brown bin it gets recycled into compost that public transport is almost non-existent in many smaller towns which makes it a necessity for teens to have their own cars 100 percent so if you want a job when you're 16 you better live walking distance to your job or have your parents get you a used car of sorts i'm gonna throw an edit in here to you city slickers not everywhere is bike friendly especially in growing cities and rural counties where downtown is along a 55 miles per hour highway without sidewalks or shoulders even if it's within walking distance many places will still not hire you if you don't have a car what if it's raining slash snowing an employee not having a car is a red flag to an employer that this person may not be reliable there's a reason why most applications ask if you have transportation to get to your job. It really sucks, but that's how it is. I've had several German friends who were amazed that at house parties everyone actually does drink out of red solo cups. They thought that was just a weird thing people did in movies and now they think it is a huge conspiracy or something. I'm Finnish and few years back people actually threw US themed parties and the high point of the parties were the red cups and drink pan played with them. Every person I know who owns a set of those cups, like 20 or so, use them only for drink pan. They wash them, and use again in the next party. Standard in Finland, are those see-through cups you see in festivals. The red cups make every party just slightly better and classier and add a feel that the host actually put in effort. The opacity is important. It's how we get around not being able to drink in public, especially for tailgating. Can you really buy a gun at Walmart? At my local Walmart you can bring your car in for an oil check, get an eye exam, get a haircut, eat lunch at the in-store subway, purchase a gun, purchase groceries, purchase a freaking couch, and then go home once the background check for the gun is finished, and the oil change is done. Don't forget getting your blood pressure checked, picking up your prescription meds, get a new sound system installed in your car, and get your taxes done. That your country is huge. I got off the plane and asked the cap guy how far the hotel was and he said about 30 miles. I almost had a heart attack. Turns out caps are cheaper than the UK. I can't remember the price I paid but I was presently surprised. The UK caps are like PS4 per mile. Also you would get laughed at the taxi for asking to go 30 miles and not taking the train. I once heard that to Americans, or thousand years is a long time, and to Europeans, or thousand miles is a long way. I've heard that with hundred instead of thousand. America has libraries that are essentially free to use. This was not even a rumor, but more like sarcastic comment from a friend who heard I was excited to go to the US because he knew what book nerds my entire family is. When I first arrived here 25 years ago, the first day of work at Newark NJ, I walked out at lunchtime and saw the huge central library. The size boggled my mind, 
but I bravely walked in to check it out. The guy says, yup, show me your work ID, for local address, and you get a membership card. Me, how much does it cost? I only own $80 total till I get my first pay. He, bemused, almost laughing, it's free, you don't pay anything. Me, after a brief recovery time from shock, so how many books am I allowed to take home? Expecting that to be a catch maybe I need to put down a security deposit for each book. He, now positively enjoying himself, how many can you carry? That day I took home 30 plus books, just being greedy, and quickly called my dad to tell him about it. For a guy who painstakingly would browse used bookstores in small town India, just to get his kids great books to read, he was suitably amazed. He was puzzled if that would kill the bookstore business, because who'd buy if such free libraries existed. Till date I remember the gratitude I felt that day for being able to come here. And when dad visited some years later, I would drop him off at a library on my way to work, and he'd be lost in it all day. This is honestly the sweetest story. Not really crazy, but I just learned you guys have like outdoor sirens that get tested somewhat frequently. I've only heard those noises in video games and movies until my friend sent me a clip because I had no idea it actually happened. In the Midwest they're for tornadoes. Yep. In some places they test the sirens weekly. In my hometown they are tested ST 1pm on the first Saturday of the month. Sirens save lives in bad storms. A lot of negative posts here, so I'll change it up. That there is a path, especially for children, to get themselves out of poverty if they are willing to work hard and put in the effort in school. My family is from India, and while we were middle class there, quite a few of our extended family lived in poverty. If a kid was born in poverty, that was his life. Kids in villages were taken out of school at early ages because they needed to work to help provide for the family. A lot of families had kids simply so they could help out around the house and earn money. Even if you went to school and college, you might have been from a lower caste and people simply would not hire you based off your last name. You probably couldn't afford books or calculator or even paper and pen to write which put you behind in school from the get go. Public education in America is lacking based off our own set standards, but it's whole hell of a lot better than many third world countries. If you're born poor, you can get public education and then get a student loan, even though they rip you off to go to college. 20 years ago, a bank in India would laugh at you if you asked for a loan to go to college, if you had no collateral or fame from a poor family. Companies on America don't look at your last name or color, hopefully, when hiring. India has come a long way in the last 20 years and that is a welcoming change. Still has a long way to go. Public education used to be much stronger in America. In the 80s there was a strong trend to deprioritize it in the budget. It is now ridiculously underfunded. Then the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001, NCLB, really crashed the standards as it focused purely on teaching for the test. It further deprioritized things like civics and physical education as they were not part of the test and you could face a govd crackdown if your students are the lowest performer on that specific test. I mean I'm in the US now and have been for a while now, but I have a few from when I knew lesser. I guess that California's GDP is the fifth largest in the world, greater than all of the UK. Oh oh and that it literally has droughts even as the fifth largest GDP in the world. I think while America has huge things still left unsolved, it is quite shocking how inclusive it is racially at least in some regions relative to what we have heard of history. When I used to hear it in the media, I wasn't so sure. For sure. It's a work in progress, but far better than expected. A lot more people than I expected are interested in other cultures and that's so great that everything is sold in large ass sizes in the department. Stores in America. I mean I thought that'd sort of be true but whoa. IDK if most people in America even know how wildly different that is. In other countries, chips are typically sold as packets about one fourth, at least, of the standard size in the US. Americans really don't give a flying our football, soccer. The whole Washington Washington DC thing took me a while to get used to, like, the fact that they're literally on different coasts. There have actually been people who have taken flights to Washington, state by mistake I know, because someone I know, is one of them, lol. Bagels. 
I heard New York bagels are supreme, but in my head I was like that's great, bread is bread though I guess. I'm sorry but now, I refuse to eat bagels anywhere outside of New York. Those bagels are my everything, and my life has been changed forever. So this is something I've actually experienced from a few Americans I thought was hella weird and stupid. Americans are really ignorant to different world accents. Had a few Americans fully drag myself and friends for having an Australian accent. Like I know that we Aussies use a lot of slang and we like to shorten words but like we are not inarticulate. They would say like Australians don't know how to talk. Like you guys don't pronounce your words correctly and it makes it very hard to understand you sometimes. Like it's common knowledge that different countries have their own style of speech. But to assume that just because we don't have the same accent and speech style, we are inarticulate and can't speak properly. I met this couple from Iowa. They told me I speak really good English for someone from the UK. Um, thanks. Well, I'm American. But I flat out couldn't believe it when I heard the statistic that the US has 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's imprisoned population. I had to go fact check and verify for myself, and it's absolutely 100% true. We are brainwashed into believing other countries like Russia or China are authoritarian hellholes, where you get slapped into the gilag for something as trivial as badmouthing the government. But it turns out, you're many times more likely, especially if you're a person of color, to be imprisoned at some point in your life in America. I think it's largely because of the drug and prostitution laws. If marijuana and prostitution were legalized, I'd bet our incarceration rate would drop significantly.